Good morning. Welcome to the Singapore Property Show 2021. Time check is about 11.30 in the morning. And this is a session specially brought to you by Mediacorp and our partners, 99 Group, and also top real estate agencies, Propnex, ERA, Hutton's Orange Tea, and SRI. I'm Stephen Chia, your host for this event. Now, our next session is going to be pretty interesting. It's about how you can maximize home ownership with the right investment mindset. Many of us want to maximize our dollars, invest in property, but not quite sure how to. So we have our next guest, Kevin Lim. He is Chief Agency Director of ERA. He's going to share with us a bit more about what the right investment mindset should be, what kind of knowledge and skills that you require should you be thinking of how you can maximize ownership of your home. He'll also be telling us a bit more about one of these uh, very nice luxury developments that everyone's got an eye on, Marina One Residences. Before I throw to him, as you know, we have a lucky draw, two $100 cash prizes to be given away. So that's the link. Sign up there at the end of the session. We'll spin the wheel and see who our two lucky winners are. Otherwise, it's now time for me to hand the session over to Kevin. Kevin? Hey, guys. Welcome to today's uh, session. Um, I'll be bringing you to um, the next session with uh, maximizing home ownership with the right mindset. So, you know, having the right information and the data is so important when it comes to property investment. And that's the why we're presenting to you SBS 2021. So, uh, today, my, my job is to share with you my personal take on uh, um, all the data I have for you, of course, from all the research. Uh, myself, um, I'm the Chief Agency Director of ERA Singapore. I've been with the company for the last 18 years, all right? 18 years. Yes, 18 years. Wow, that's, that's been a while. So hopefully today I'll do a good job for you. All right. Um, before I start, um, some dis disclaimer. So um, these are all just my personal view, and of course all the information that we have gathered. All right. Before you make any uh, property purchase or decision or investment, uh, you know, please be uh, uh, very acceptant on your decision. Right. Check to your credits and your your affordability. All right. So. Um, I, I guess uh, you guys have uh, seen today, uh, this morning's uh, um, uh, opening and uh, all, all the bosses and CEOs of various agencies has been talking about rising prices. But um, let's look at uh, something of a global situation. So uh, rising prices everywhere around the world, it's not just Singapore. And of course, if you look at it, in fact, Singapore uh, only rose about 3.2%. In fact, like New Zealand, it grows like a good 23%. Um, overall, this article, um, it's a fact. It tells us everywhere else in around the world um, having priced up despite having the global pandemic. So one reason you might ask, hey, how come Singapore it's 3.2%? Um, I can only say it's because we are already at a certain level. So the growth shouldn't be too huge. Uh, New Zealand, on the other hand, may be a little bit different. It's a bigger country, right? Before, maybe their prices are slightly low. But if you look at uh, the next slide, um, I pull out from the article because here it's a little bit too small for you to see. So from the article, we go one by one. So New Zealand over here, right? The country, um, you know, uh, have like successfully combat uh, uh, well in the coronavirus and pass, you know, make it like a safe haven uh, for returning investors and of course, returning local. So pumping back into the real estate market with confidence, and of course, it rose by 23%. Um, over at the USA, right? Um, same thing, mortgage uh, has been low and borrowing has been easier and uh, thus, you know, contributing to, to real estate success. Right. And of course, we look at Canada over here. So Canada, um, you know, is having a warning of overheating, uh, just like Singapore. So, you know, they may have or they really have their own version of their own uh, cooling measure. Right. And of course, we look at over here, Australia. Right. For every new listing added into the market, 1.1 home are sold. It doesn't make sense. Right. So because demand is more than supply. One home at 1.1 home sold. All right. Of course, to Hong Kong, which is very close to Singapore, um, that's why you can see that the growth is, is, is also um, 0 0.7 because their property prices are already uh, at a certain level. But of course, uh, low interest rate right, is insufficient. Supply have pushed the Hong Kong property uh, higher. And that's why in countries like uh, Singapore and Hong Kong, uh, you can see over the last many years, you know, cooling measures, uh, restrictions have been put up 
just to make sure the government do their job to control uh, the property prices. Okay, so this is a little bit overview of what's going on. Okay, and um, of course, a uh, couple of key, key reasons. I, I'm not sure if you are listening out there. Of course, this is really a, a factual thing. Uh, it's, it's property prices, it's property overall real estate in Singapore hot. I, I guess everyone can feel it from the news, from the show flat, from, you know, amidst this pandemic, the, the, the amount of uh, real estate movement that is going on, I guess uh, most people, right, would, would logically agree it's, it's, it's hot, it's moving up, it's high, you know, whatever the word is. But then, of course, the key reason that we all have to know is why. Of course, number one key reason is the fact that it's low interest rate in today's market. I think this has been repeatedly, even from this morning's opening to the early on sharings, right? Low interest rate. Um, when interest rate has fallen to today, say probably about um, one one percent minimum. I think you can find one one percent. Uh, refinance is low as well. I think it's it's a fact that it helps to ease up the money installment, and it's a confident and it's it's like a it's like a plus point for for people to borrow money to buy real estate, right? So of course, in this article, uh, you know, uh, in February um, early on this year. Right, our then DP, uh, DPM uh, Hang Hang Sui Kate that flagged out that this low interest rate. But of course, uh, importantly, uh, you know, uh, having uh, resilience and uh, you know knowing your borrowing amount, it's it's still very much important. All right, of course, uh, brought to you by uh, Key West Mortgage here. Uh, they have uh, provided me with the interest rate across board from uh, new homes to purchasing to uh, resale to refinancing. Okay, fact number two, which is so important, is the high transaction volume. Uh, importantly, is this word here from genuine local home buyer. So, you know, it can be high volume from speculator in last time, people cooling measures, right? So, from genuine, how do we know? Ah, I'll talk about it later. Local, because our current pandemic, it's foreigners are not coming in. Of course, they can buy uh, remotely online without viewing it, but to be honest, it's not that easy anyway, right? And how come without the foreigners, without the people coming into Singapore, because we are always, uh, you know, boosted by foreign investment. So why, why are we still having growth in this pandemic? Isn't it supposed to be uh, dampened? So a very common question that um, people always ask me is, hey, hey, hi, Kevin, why is the prices still growing uh, despite of the pandemic? Um, I always think about the question and I always think that, it is because of the pandemic, and that is why the property prices are growing. Uh, because somehow, um, in the later part of my slide, I'll show you that the, because of really, not that we won the pandemic, because of the pandemic, the, the Singapore has done a good job in overall, has uh, brought us to some attention of global uh, purchaser, of people's attention that uh, sieve out Singapore as a safe haven and a still a good place to put their money. Of course, looking at this slide here, uh, it's something not new, right? Uh, of course, including ECs, right? Uh, these are the way the, the, the units are sold, right? And we are here today at uh, April, okay? And you can see from the chart, uh, a couple of things I want to share over here. It's, yes, uh, if you still remember over at uh, April last year, which nobody can forget, we went into our circuit breaker, right? Phase one. And uh, we are all, number one, all, everyone is lost because we've never been through this thing before. And if you remember the whole, all the FMB are closed like now, the, the, the retail are closed, which now is not closed, right? And there's totally no viewing for, for us, um, for real estate agent. No viewing at all. We are not allowed even two packs, nothing at all, okay? So show flats are closed, show flats are closed. But you, if I ask you a question, Steve, if before the lock, uh, before the circuit breaker, we are averagely say about eight, nine, a um, thousand units per month, suddenly drop to two, nine, three over here, two, nine, three. If I ask you, is it a good good number? I guess it's normal for you to say, no, it's a bad number compared to a uh, 904, 293 is a bad number. I agree with you. But if you take a look at another angle, isn't it supposed to be zero transactions? Because my show flats are closed, I'm not allowed to go for viewing, you know, and people are in a panic mode and uh, nervous. Isn't it supposed to be zero? But how come there is still two, nine, three? It only tells you something, right? Property market, real estate is resilience. 
it is something in the blood of people, you know, and logically, people do see that it's an opportunity among a crisis. Of course, people are still nervous. That's why you can see within a one-month reaction, guys, just one month, ladies and gentlemen, the prices went, the, the number of units went up to 509. Um, almost double, not really double, almost, right? And straight away on June, it went back to good old days of 1,000 unit. And then since then, right, all the way is an uptrend to we hit a ever highest. Of course, you must understand, uh, in June is where we got out of uh, our, our phase two. And then in all the way, June never would, even I uh, predicted or imagine we could have reached 2,000, past 2,000 mark of transactions in um, among the COVID uh, pandemic. And of course, uh, you do see some candles Sticks are a little bit low because these are also very much packed onto um, whether uh, the supply of new launch uh, uh, available at the point on the day one of every new launch, you know, is always selling the, the, the highest. So it is really a proof uh, why the pandemic, uh, you know, doesn't really stop because you can delay demand, but you must understand demand can never be destroyed, right? And of course, uh, until today, we are here. You can see e last just uh, last month um, April we are also at one three four two. Interesting because we are in May now we are back to um, heightened alert phase two. I do not have the figure yet. Uh, it looks it looks promising to date to now. It looks promising. Again we are back into our home. Um, I'm supposed to be at the studio doing this uh, presentation to you, but because of heightened alert now I'm doing it at my home because we're supposed to not meet together. So. Um, but one key factor that you must understand now, the airports are still closed. The foreigners are still not marching in to buy real estate, even though, yes, it can be uh, uh, done remotely, right? And of course, a couple of key questions here that you may ask yourself, uh, are these genuine local buyers? I guess it must be because um, the last eight years of cooling measures have already put things in place. If you still buy something in today, after going through either A, ABSD, B, strong TDSR, and if you don't pay ABSD because it's your first property, likely you are really buying for own use or at least your first investment. If you're paying ABSD, likely I think you are somebody who has money and you can hold because holding power, it is a very important keyword in home buying. All right, and of course, uh, today we don't have speculator anymore. And thus, uh, the next slides, if you look at it, uh, is this the overall 20 years uh, sales transaction volume, including EC, right? We are at here now. I didn't, this is Q1. There was not no April added. April, I believe you can look at here, it's 1342. And if you add April plus the 4227, you get about 5569. And if you look back last year with uh, no circuit, uh, with circuit breaker, it's 11,258. 11, and this year, we are around 50% done for January, February, March, April. But what do this chart tell us again? Buying in low transaction volume, it's never a bad thing. If you still remember what happened in 2003, you know, can someone help, you know? <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure if you can reply by the chat, but you know, can you just shout it out, you know, 2003, what happened? Of course, we know it's SARS. Um, it's a transaction low, yes. 208, it's the um, the Lehman Brothers, right? The subprime, transaction is low. 1-4, cooling measures came in hard. It's low transaction. These are high transaction, but Till now, we are just half mountain of the high transaction volume. Do you think the transaction, as per predicted now, already done 50%, should end up higher than last year in this year? If you take this number and evenly just do your you know, calculation, this year, we by calculations, you end up 15, 16,000. So now, I will say it is still a window of opportunity for you to take the action because every week, every month, every second counts because the, it's just creeping up. And these are just what statistics and data 
can really give you an insight. All right? Okay, and you look at this chart here, all right? Uh, proportion of buyers based on residential status, uh, overall Q1, Q2, uh, sorry, Q1, Q1 of 2020, 2021. You can see this is uh, Q1 2020. It went up to 2000 plus. Overall is 74.5%, all right? 75% in Ramalap, all right? Changes. But um, SPR seems the higher change, but if you look at the pure data of numbers, 200 plus to 400 plus is pretty okay. 1006 to 2008 is a huge jump. And these are all majority Singaporeans. All right. So this is a proof. This is a fact that um, all these transactions come from genuine, importantly, genuine local home buyer. All right. All right. So next, we understand why it's so hot. Right? Because seriously speaking, uh, today, uh, even when we sell um, CCR project, when we check back on the address, many come from an HDB address. Because after all, uh, HDB is 80% of our uh, population of real estate in Singapore. And uh, just look at now, we are 2021, uh, just 192021, or even next year, we have this effect of a very much high avalanche of MOP units in HDB. So minimum occupation period mid then the HDB owners from BTO can sell their unit. Yes, not everyone sell on the fifth year, but statistics shows a lot of people once met their MOP, this younger generation, right, will normally take the profit and they will jump to uh, private property, which just like a lot of our audience listening in. So there is a huge avalanche of MOP uh, that have came our way, coming to our way and happening now. And also, um, you look at... Um, EC, all right? I didn't have the chart here. EC, I guess all in all, there is about um, 20 over projects of EC that is up with their minimum occupation period of five years. And uh, 21 units may eventually, you know, average uh, condominium size, you can times so 21 units. These are people that are available with profit made from the ECs ready to come out and buy some new launches or buy some resale condo. So that is adding into the transactions. Okay, and of course, facts number three, uh, you know, you can see uh, despite the pandemic, uh, uptrend is all the while available on the, uh, is shown on the, uh, um, the graph. And I plug from point A to point B, and point A, I plug from uh, one A is because I took from the last cooling measure. If you remember last cooling measure when um, it came out on, uh, you know, higher taxes, it's um, that night where Park Colonia, River France, Sterling went into their launch immediately, if you remember, on the July 6th, right? And of course, we plug from there. We, every quarter, we, we do a up or down. You can see all in all the key indicator here, it's from Q318 to Q1221. Uh, there is total of eight ups and only three down in terms of growth, right? So, so this is a very strong upward trend shown uh, from statistics. Of course, then uh, we look at uh, Singapore, sunny Singapore. We know we are differentiated into uh, OCR, RCR, and uh, CCR. And of course, um, today, um, I'm more focusing on CCR region. You can see we got your tra traditional 9, 10, 11. You have got your uh, new, new uh, Marina Bay area, the new uh, uh, in, uh, CCR, where it's one, District 1, mainly District 2, District 7, all right? And a little bit of uh, 4 and 6, yeah? uh, sub -part, some part of it is a CCR. And uh, we look at the uh, CCR overall uh, performance in the last uh, 15 years, right? Uh, it's about 159% uh, growth if it's from 15 years. 10-year growth, it's about 23%. And 5-year growth, it's about 13%, all right? Of course, uh, we also look at the average, okay? The average uh, CCR project launches that is in the market now. And we took from first uh, quarter of, of 21, and we look at it. And we divided out, yes, uh, where some are freehold, some are 99. Uh, we take an average, we have key indication. We have about uh, 2,000, almost 2,009, 2,881 per square foot. This is an average, not the low, not the high. The average in CCR as a player, as a development, playing in the field of CCR, you need to know your average is about 2,881 from Q121. Of course, then we zoom into how about project that is so-called no near near CBD area. So I took from uh, District 1, 2, and 7, and we average out them, and we end up at about the same, about close to 2009, 2874. So this is 
at least know the guideline of an average PSF if you want to go into the market. Of course, we also look at um, the surrounding uh, land cost in the CCR. Uh, we have plugged a chart and you can see it's a uptrend uh, land cost uh, because you must understand how things work because land is always cost to a developer plus the construction plus the marketing fee and at the end of the day, they have an estimated break even and it all comes out to developer's profit margin, right? And you can see over the last 10 years or 20 years, the margin has come down because of higher, more expensive construction uh, costs. And today, because of the pandemic, uh, labels and things are still uh, difficult and land costs are always ever rising in the, uh, at least in the world, <laughs> especially Singapore, right? And of course, earlier on, I, I, I hear about one speaker mentioning again, the Tanamera land uh, GLS. Wow, it's, 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 it's nobody know Tanamera, wow, break even at this price, launching estimated have to be around one eight you know, or above for Tanamera, you know, and um, developers are still bidding in and you can have more than 10 bids in a GLS as at this price. And importantly, if you look at the GLS bid, uh, it's not that the, only the first guy who won the bid is like super high price. The second, third, fourth guy are just nearly just a little bit off from the first guy. It shows confidence. It shows that the developers are not, you know, not doing, not say not doing their homework. They are, right? So rising land costs, uh, it's, it's, it's also seen in CCR. And of course, um, I want to bring to your attention today uh, on District 2, uh, there is, uh, you know, from the last uh, master plan, uh, we will look at the two developments here, right, of the Realty Center and the uh, uh, Fuji uh, Xerox Tower redevelopment over here. So, you know, uh, for the last uh, master plan, um, the government had an uh, incentive of CBD, uh, mainly two things. Uh, of course, objectively, they wanted a new skyline because we know there's always a older CBD called the Shenton Way, which, which um, you know, in the 80s, 90s, and eventually in the early 2000s, there were the uh, IR, if you still remember IR, you know, and then um, on the Marina South, there's a the department now that we have the whole uh, Marina Bay area where we've got the barrage, uh, we got the garden by the bay, we got the Marina Bay Sands. So these are the IR so-called back then. Now it's like a new CBD. And subsequently, um, there is the water, Greater Southern Waterfront that is already in, in, in plan, right? I don't know if that you're going to call that the third CBD, but all in all, uh, Shannon Way, it's kind of like an old CBD. It's like an old Wall Street. So government uh, in the last cooling, uh, in the last master plan, uh, one night, uh, had a plan that want to rejuvenate the skyline of it because a lot of the old buildings there are really um, 20 years, 30 years, and they give two incentives. One of it, of course, is to up the plot ratio. And the other one is to let you have mixed use. That means a pure commercial building uh, in, in Shenton Way today has the reason to tear down for a developers to buy or for the owner to tear down, to redevelop into a mixed use because that's what uh, the government wanted to introduce uh, work, leave and play. So the, with the leveraging on the incentive scheme, you see there is a lot of movement within the old CBD. And of course, in this article, I'm just going to quickly let you know that uh, there's movement. So in uh, Tanjong uh, Paga, the Royalty Center, even uh, a developer MCC land took a 30% stake uh, with the buyer of place holding, right, uh, of the um, uh, Royalty Center, all right? And of course, then this is to, to illustrate to you this, this happening of this uh, insertion. So, uh, you know, CDL have, uh, you know, plans to redevelop the freehold uh, Fuji uh, Xerox building, uh, capitalizing on the uh, URA CBD incentive again. Of course, then, you know, they were able to build a higher mixed use uh, building. And of course, a potential 25% uh, of uplift. And this is the reason why people are going, uh, developers are going in because there is a benefit. And this benefit is all got, given by the government uh, to build taller buildings, right? Uh, of course, uh, these are articles in, in case you want to take a look. Um, um, two incentives, all right? One scheme encourage mixed use project in CBD. The other uh, promotes joint uh, redevelopments to transform pristine in strategic area, right? So by giving bonus plot ratio scheme, right? And of course, um, currently, if you look at our, our downtown, which is a so -called, my so-called old CBD, you can see mostly largely a commercial building around here. And of course, the future, Right, they wanted a little bit of more like a mixed use, so yellow color mixed use. So these are um, reasons, right? And of course, um, give a second. All right. So of course, um, they increase the percentage of the plot ratio over here, and uh, you know, uh, Anson, Cecil Street, um, uh, Tanjung Pagar, Robinson Road. Uh, these are the criteria. 
Uh, then if you look at the plot, uh, the master plan on the plot ratio is significantly changed uh, after the uh, master plan 2019, things are becoming different colors, right? So of course, uh, coming back to uh, this place that I mentioned earlier on, Marina area, the Marina Bay, of course, uh, in last time, we do not know what's going to be here or here or, you know, many things. But of course, if you have got the crystal ball back then, then of course, uh, nobody has. Uh, today, it's so beautiful and it's not just there to us. It's a world-class, uh, recognized, iconic area, uh, just like Monaco, you know, because this tomorrow they're having an F1 in Monaco, right? So that's why I said Monaco, right? And of course, um, can anyone tell me, uh, you know, what is uh, uh, this building, if you still remember? All right, so of course this is the seal at Marina Bay. Uh, it's it's um it's a um thousand one hundred eleven unit uh, project completed in zero eight. Uh, historical high of three four nine nine. Uh, nine nine years Marina. Uh, the sale at Marina Bay. But importantly, there is this but profiting from a first mover. Uh, being shown in the the sale. Back then, if you remember, uh, you know, I was uh, really a junior agent because I do about 18 years in the industry. So back then in 2004-03, when it launched, it was my first, second year of um, real estate agent's work. So I can clearly remember the launches. So this chart shows you uh, the profit that's being made from uh, the sale from 2.1 million. Oh my gosh, guys, can you imagine this owner over here? Uh, we are listening in. Wow, you are very good, man. 6106, right? Uh, bought on 05, so on 19, you make a profit of 2.134 million. And these are all million dollar profit. Okay. And of course, uh, you look at uh, the next one. Of course, this is uh, Marina Bay Residences. Okay. And uh, it's, it's um, TOP two years later after the sale, uh, only 428 units of a, a high of 4,368. And of course, uh, again, there is a super profit being made. Wow, this guy, good job, man. 3, 3 million, 3.315 million for 30 unit, 30 dash 10. Okay. And of course, uh, why am I sharing with you this is because um, if you look at this project, Marina One Residences, in short, we call it MOR. Okay. So Marina One Residences, um, the average from launch to today, average is about 2,448 per square foot on the average, right? And of course, if we compare, uh, why why is this a good opportunity? Why is Marina or one a residences a good um a good product that I today I want to recommend to you? It is because uh the average price in the uh Marina Bay area for Marina or one residences is only two four four eight averagely averagely. Right, of course, depending on high floor, mid floor, or low floor, that is the micro you when you go into it. But average D two four four eight. Um, and if you look at um, chances are, uh, MBR has transacted four three six eight before in the history of Singapore. Yes, uh, transacted eleven. Cooling measures came in. This is the reason why you need to come in because if not, today we're probably at 6,000, 7,000 per square foot in Marina area. But because of cooling measures, and of course, I don't want to talk much on it. We all know what's going on. This rest of history, the price today is 2448. So my question to you is, today is 2021. If you go in at 2000 odd, right? Maybe 2004, maybe 2005, maybe 2006, Importantly, is this a good entry price? Number two, do you have a lot of risk upside that is in it? The question to this answer is, I think number one, this is a fantastic entry price. We cannot go back to the sale back then below $1,000 anymore because back then is a first mover advantage. To be fair, uh, back then, today, there's already Marina Bay Sands and you know the news of Marina Bay Sands is going to be adding on another tower, Greater Southern Waterfront story, all the good things from the last master plan that's being introduced, focusing on the Marina Bay area. All right. Now, of course, uh, you know, uh, 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 things are never the same again. And importantly, uh, are you buying at record price? So today, number one, entry price is right. Risk is low. You are not buying at the record price. So that's why there is a huge built-in profit or rather a potential uh, upside, which I say is really huge, that is potentially sitting on in front of you using data, all right? 
And of course, you must be thinking, hey, Kevin, you use 4,368. No, what if there's only this, 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 uh, rep, this gung ho guy that buy this unit? But ladies and gentlemen, there is more than just one gung ho guy. Of course, he is 4,368 over here. But the rest of many, many 3,000 over transactions is page one of 25. And the sale also have many, many 3,000 over unit or a PSF a transaction, all right? Sure, we don't use a four, three, six, eight. Just use 3,000 plus, guys. At least $1,000 of built-in profits, buffering, cushioning, whatever you want to call it. So definitely Marina One is a really a piece of property for you to consider. Of course, um, from here, we, we look at another of the key data. Um, if you take about new uh, uh, disparity between uh, uh, new projects and uh, the resale in CCR uh, from the statistics, it's about 34% disparity. That means new and older projects disparity, averagely 34%. And if we do a simple um, uh, illustration, we take a comparison between a Marina One residences and the sale, all right? which is the sale, we take 1965. And if you times by the disparity of 34, actually you should end up at about 2633. But if you remember, the average price is only 24 plus per square foot. We are not even near the disparity. All right. And if you use this calculation, our disparity is not 34, but only 12. So again, this strongly prove the huge cushioning that we have uh, for Marina One Residences. And guys, you remember just now I show you this average uh, CCR project. If you look over here, Marina One is sitting not at the top, not at the middle, not at the bottom, but at a very comfortable range here for you to be looking at 2471 PSF averagely. January, first quarter to May, PSF 2471. All right. It's still below the average of 2881. And even if you look at the average of the CBD projects, right, it's still sitting at below 2874. So definitely, again, entry price is correct, risk is low, also not the record, the unit pricing. Of course, um, uh, just to show you back again, this is the average of our pricing. And let's look at surrounding actually right now. All right. We have a uh, South Beach residence. SVR is in my short form. South Beach residence. Uh, it is a District 7 project. A historical transaction high of 3950 is transacted before. All right. We look at Midtown Bay. District 7, and we are in District 1 for Marina 1. 3008 has been transacted before. We look at Midtown Modern again. That was Midtown Bay, the side by side. Huh? So it's again $4,213 transacted. Wallach Residences was also $4,987 transacted. Even yes, we look at an average range of their PSF. It is still 3000 plus, right? 27, 3000 plus. 3,000 plus, All right? So these are, again, a very much of a confidence given to you. And we look at the piece of article, Wallet Residence, um, the one that I told you they transacted. Yes, it's a penthouse unit, but even you look at uh, over here, regular three bedroom also transact 3,832. Regular one bedroom on the 48th floor transacted 3,677. 3,677, ladies and gentlemen. All right. And of course, you know, uh, some of the very uh, big news or uh, the, the top news that is going on in the CCR that I wish to compound for you. It's, um, of course, we all know uh, someone bought the whole Eden Draycott. Uh, they decided buying a one unit or two or three. It's a little bit too uh, normal. They want to buy one whole uh, building, you know. <laughs> so, of course, we know all in the news, uh, Wang Wang, you know, you, you, I don't know. I hope you have heard of Wang Wang, uh, Wang Wang, the, the, the Taiwanese biscuit. Right. Um, the family bought the, the, the Eden at Draycott Park uh, there for uh, 20 units for uh, 4,824 per square foot, breaking the 4,800 mark. 
And of course, uh, it's not the first time because uh, three Orchard by the Park breaking 4,008 mark, all right, for unit transacted. Uh, again, then break 4,009 mark, Volobat 88, all right, uh, it breaks uh, 4,009 mark, all right. And of course, then we broke the 5,000 mark, right, by another penthouse in Volobat 88. And of course, recently, um, I am um, not sure if you know this news. Uh, one of the recent launches that we did in uh, Park Mova uh, broke a record high of uh, transacted 5,838, 5,838. Remember this magic number, guys. So um, even for land price, we talk about land. Land is always never that high because it's, it's, it's not a strata title. But wow, a GCB with such a big piece of land broke a record of $4,005. That is really insane, right? And all this, yes, they, they, they may be for the rich and famous, but you see, they are also love money as much as you do. They also have fear. But why are they doing this? And importantly, I learned something from here. Wow, the owner that was not directly sold to the uh, the, the, the nano firm but, uh, founder, the, the previous one. So he bought it at 19.3 million, the, the, the guy before and before, right? Then sold it to uh, sold it on and on until from 19.3 million in the last 20 years became 128.8 million. Oh my God, from $600 per square foot to $4,005 per square foot, guys. It just really showed the wonderful thing real estate can do for you. Of course, real estate is very different from stock market. It's not like stock, it will go to zero or negative in overnight. It is supposed to be a mid to long-term investment anyway. Right. Of course, over here, this news says the CTR luxury property movement. Right. Wealthy Singaporeans, uh, Singaporeans are not overseas people, uh, still buying luxury amidst the downturn because of the pandemic. So here, key indicator, high end demand are more resilient because I guess they are never, um, uh, they are, uh, I mean, they have so much money, you know, they are pandemic proof. Lah. Right, in a way, right? Of course, buyer with uh, financial capability sees economy downturn as an opportunity, an upside, a way to buy, okay? A sun to buy during a way all right? Of course, uh, CCR property are always low in supply. To be honest with you, right? It's always a small pie, right? And of course, here we see foreigners pick up trophy homes, guys, trophy homes. I think the Eden, that whole building by 20 units for your own family to stay, I think it is trophy home, right? I think money, they have a lot, you know, probably, but trophy homes, not a lot. So they are just buying because they want trophy homes and 10 folds of in March. There were around 10 times more luxury homes uh, sold in Pram District from March than February. Okay. Now, of course, uh, high-end condo sales, all right, search, all right. So key indicator here, transactions in the most expensive CCR was 543 units in March. Eight years high. Eight years. Ladies and gentlemen, if today, 2021, you call back eight years, which year is that? Huh? Mathematics question. 21, three. Correct. Thank you very much. All right. And of course, 16 new cases caveated from 5 mil. These are all the ultra luxury property, right? The most transaction clock, right? In CCR. So if you look at this, why does I say 21, three? If you call back 2021 minus eight years high, you go back to 21, three. And if you remember, this is a start of the first cooling measures that comes in and you know and when wreck us and we, we were like you know getting used to it over the last uh, uh, almost uh, many many years and that is why you see that it's still those kind of a uh, higher transaction just like the marina bay the the, the residents and the sale that i show you but it's rather quiet in the middle segment here and things start to pick up from 1819 to today 2021 we have seen 5800 plus Right, so it's 5,800 plus a biggest, highest PSF ever transacted in sunny Singapore. Ah, the answer is no. All right, so I'll bring it back later. But over here, you can see I box this up because I box it since the cooling measure. Right, you can see CCR has the lowest red color growth, which is a good news because as the growth is lower and right now it gives you a huge potential upside. And of course, if you think six. Uh, $5,800 is expensive. Of course, sometimes we need to compare around the world. Uh, best of the best, best, best of the best country, Hong Kong, 2,000, uh, sorry, 23,370 per square foot. Oh my God. Guys, why is 5,000 plus per square foot when there is 23,000? Can you just put your feet like this and this is like one square foot adds $23,000. 
right? And of course, it's in Hong Kong, over a 3,378 uh, square foot penthouse in the mid level, Ban San, okay, Ban San uh, in Hong Kong, right? Of course, Singapore record, it's still only at um, 6,840 ladies and gentlemen in the mark, where right? the mark where there is, uh, uh, you know, at the um, Patterson there. So it's back in uh, 2021. And guys, we are almost closing back to the mark price, in fact, if not higher. Why? Because like I showed you just now, over here, there is cooling measure and before here, don't have. So if you use 5,008 and you really thumbs by 1 point, uh, I mean 20% of ABSD, it will give you almost $7,000 per square foot and it's already surpassed in my opinion. Okay, but of course, these are just angle of looking at things uh, that I would like to share with you. And of course, today, um, uh, uh, thanks for giving me this opportunity to give you this, uh, 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 my own take on my uh, uh, view as an uh, agent or team leader and, uh, you know, in the agency business for the last 18 years. Uh, today, of course, I'm happy to see this uh, potential project that I want to introduce to you called Marina One Residences. And of course, uh, it has offices, grade A offices, and it has a retail mall as well. And of course, we're looking at the residences. Um, here, it's the beautiful uh, Marina One residences over here. At the back here, it's two towers of grade A offices. And here, it's two towers of residential, right? At the close proximity to the famous, iconic Marina Bay Sands, the flyer, and the uh, MBFC 123 over here. And of course, um, like I say, this is a newer area. Uh, it's a newer CBD, the older CBD is around here. And uh, you do see a lot of white sites in front. Uh, and to me, uh, these are opportunity. Uh, white sites are very rare. And uh, if they are ever to be launched, trust me, it will never be cheap. But why is the government not launching these sites yet? Uh, let me come to it later. Okay, just to let me to share with you a very quick news that I had back then about Marina One, you know, just a quick one. Marina One project is set to raise the bar for future integrated developments and act as a catalyst to attract and grow new businesses. That's the vision of M plus S, the joint venture between Singapore and Malaysia, which is working on the landmark project located in the heart of the central business district. It's another effort in sowing the seeds of friendship. Singapore's Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong and his Malaysian counterpart, Mr. Najib Razak, unveiled the design for the Marina One project. The design expresses the energy and vibrancy of the new district in Marina Bay. The development comprises two towers of more than 1,000 luxury city residences. This will be launched later this year. There will also be offices and a retail podium called The Heart. Marina One will occupy a land space of about 340,000 square meters and is valued at seven billion Sing dollars. It's going to be an iconic project in the middle of our new business district for many, many more years to come. And I think this is a project which we'll both be very proud of and which will thrive and prosper and add to our city and to our friendship. I think we have a wonderful design. I think we have a real winner in this Marina One, and uh, it will certainly uh, fulfill our expectation that we wanted a landmark, an iconic building, and what we see today is the beginning of that iconic building. The two leaders were also briefed on the progress of the other joint project located near Kampung Glam. The project, called Duo, includes office, residential and hotel components. It sits on 160,000 square meters of land and is valued at 4 billion Sing dollars. The Duo and Marina One are part of six land parcels jointly developed by Singapore and Malaysia under a land swap deal agreed on in 2010. Developers say construction for the Marina One project is on track. Piling has started and is expected to be completed by 2017. Marina One will join other iconic buildings in the area in setting a new backdrop for the Singapore city skyline. Okay, so what did we um, register from this uh, news that I captured on channel, um, channel 5? It's number one, it keep mentioning three, four, five times iconic building. Iconic. I mean, it's really iconic. And the time flies, Ray Marina, one residence, the Ready TOP sitting beautifully on site. It's really iconic in a day. 
in the night. Second piece of uh, you know news that you pick up is this is if you remember is a land swap um, you know collaboration between Singapore and uh, Malaysia and, and that is why you can see wow this is the first time my uh, model or my spokesperson um, for a project that we are representing it's our Prime Minister uh, Mr Lee Hsien Long and uh, that's uh, wow a very uh, prestigious things for us of course uh, it's 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 a collaboration between um, Temasek Holdings and uh, uh, Kazana. Uh, to form a, a company called M Plus S, which are a developer for this project, on uh, two projects, uh, namely uh, dual residences and Marina one residences, Marina One residences. All right. So I just pick you um, choose some facts and figures. Uh, total Marina One residences is about um, one thousand forty two units, and we have sold nine hundred and eighteen units. So what I'm trying to say is, um, there's only one hundred and twenty four units selling live as we go. Every week we're transacting. Honestly, we don't have a lot of units and today I only have 124 units left uh, for you to consider. But it's okay because um, still there is an opportunity over here. Of course, I'm very happy to have met the, key, the main architect, um, Christoph Ingehoven for um, uh, Ingehoven uh, Architecture uh, over at um, the Marina One uh, project back then when I met him. Uh, of course, if you do not jot down Christoph Ingolven, you do a research. Uh, this architect is a German architect that is um, very much focused into green buildings, iconic buildings, and it's really famous if you do some research on him. So uh, here is a little article that I have, the token from the Ingolven architects, so, uh, the, the, about the wind tunneling, uh, the design of Marina One residences over here, and how cross ventilation has uh, uh, improved airflow, uh, to make it a a, a, a building that is um, you know not so hot, uh, microclimate, uh, you know, for you to take a look. And of course, uh, I think what what um really uh captured my attention back then was this thing called a uh, green hut. So in Marina One, it's no, it's like a, a two office towers and two residential. In the middle, there's a cross wing, there's a cross uh, uh ventilation. You look down, there is a a one sixty. 65 square meter, uh, square uh, foot of green heart uh, that is allowed, uh, that is built in the middle of it. And if you've ever been to Marina One Residences, you look down, wow, it's really very magnificent. And within that, there's always uh, a man-made 30 meter waterfall that add to the whole effect of it. Of course, I took some pictures, a real site pictures uh, back uh, on the project. Uh, it's, it's internal view is very nice. I mean, when we buy a piece of project, you know, people always want to look out into the look out of the project. You know, no one wants to look into the project. Personally, this is a couple of few projects that I rather look into the project because inside it's, it's so beautiful. All right. And then this is a night view of the project. Uh, over here is a green hut and a waterfall. All right. And then these are the residences over here. And these are the office towers. All right. And of course, uh, being in a, 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 this a garden city, uh, by the bay, Marina Bay, uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a direction of a uh, three key, live, play, and work together, All right? And of course, um, if you remember early on, I said there's some white sites, and of course, uh, now uh, Marina One is here, All right? And of course, uh, these are all the underground uh, pedestrian network, the uh, UPN, right, on the underground. So if you ask me, my personal take is like a little bit like um, all the New York, you know, where you are in New York City, from this tunnel, you can just walk to everywhere else, all connected, or Japan, you know, something like that. So a lot of underground tunnels are actually uh, being uh, uh, being done now. And of course, this is probably the reason why, in my opinion, these white sites are not ready to sell because a lot of work are being, infrastructure are being done because you must understand Marina Bay is a fresh piece of land it is a really, really start from round zero, okay? And of course, um, I think very much interesting here is uh, Marina Residences has got four, not one, not two, not three, four MRT lines that you can enjoy from within the project. Uh, North, South, Circle, Downtown, and the you know, Thompson East Coast Line. If you look at Thompson East Coast Line, uh, of course, a little bit of delay because of the, you know, probably pandemic, uh, the station has got three colors. This is all, all the station that you have to, you can join all the way to Siglap East side, right? To Bedok South, 
all the way up to city, the Archer Road, all the way to Woodlands. So the Thompson East Coast Line, it's part of uh, just below this project. And of course, uh, the North South Line, which is a uh, older line, uh, but still very, very crucial line that is at the same station of Marina uh, Bay. And of course, the Circle Line, right? Circle Line, it's also inside Marina Bay Station as an interchange, right? Because this is one of the huge interchange. And of course, uh, the downtown lines uh, on another station nearby, the downtown station over here, right? So downtown station, right? You have the downtown uh, line, which is pretty much what I'm trying to say. If you cannot register what I'm saying, it connects to everywhere in Singapore, right at the basement uh, of the project. All right. And of course, uh, you know, being in um, the, the Marina Bay area, uh, probably I think uh, focusing on national park it's, it's, it's very important, but of course you have your biggest national park nearby called um, uh, Gardens by the Bay. And of course, uh, you know, just like New York Central Park, uh, One Hyde Park, if you've been to London and New York, uh, this is our little uh, park over here, 230 meters, it's quite a long, lengthy uh, front uh, that is facing uh, the residential towers and of course, at the back, there's another linear path, but I think uh, the Marina Station Square here, it's 230 meters of green, guaranteed green national park in front of you. I think it, that's, it's very timely to have such a, a piece of green within a, a CBD area. Okay, and of course, next, if you allow me a couple of minutes to share with you this uh, video, and I will talk a little bit more about it in a while, sir. just enjoy. In the season Westworld as a Singaporean, is an interesting exercise. You're spending half the time following the story, and the other half is spent playing Spot the Landmark. That's Orchard Road, that's Stadium MRT Station, that's the Esplanade, that's Atlas Bar, which isn't inside the Esplanade. My Country was a major filming location for this season of Westworld, leading to the peculiar experience of watching famous actors wander about the places and landmarks that I and many other Singaporeans have been to. If you live in New York or LA, this might be a common experience, but it's rare for us, so let's indulge for a bit. It took me a while though to realize that Singapore, for most scenes, isn't actually playing Singapore in Westworld. Many of these Singaporean landmarks are portrayed as landmarks in a future Los Angeles. I watched further though, there was something else that started niggling at me. These Singaporean landmarks are seen in Westworld they're only really one side of Singapore. Singapore is a big city with a rich history, but in Westworld, we only see the side that looks futuristic and contemporary and modern. There's a reason why Westworld focuses on this aspect of Singapore's cityscape, and that reason is rather interesting to think about. All right. So uh, why do I show you this video? Because uh, you know I realized, uh, wow, uh, Westworld. If, if you are Westworld fans, you know, okay. If you do not know, Westworld is just an American sci-fi uh, movie. There's already Westworld two or three. I can't remember it. So it, it's not on Netflix, so you, you can't catch it on Netflix. But I'm surprised. Marina One. It's, it's because it's a very high-tech, uh, future, uh, sci-fi building. Future. So they are featuring Marina One as one of their location in Singapore. And why do they use Marina One if they, they, they don't use other condos? I mean, there's so many condos around Marina Bay, or there, you know, why they use Marina One? Well, because they also agree it's not just a condo, it's iconic, it's futuristic. It's so good enough for them to come all the way to Singapore and take this as their uh, one of their sites for their filming. And of course, you know, Marina One, it's had been in the limelight for a while. It's being featured by Forbes in their Instagram, in their in their articles. It, it's being featured in, in CNA Luxury. Uh, it's being featured in many places. Even of course, I um, you know our Romeo Tan from uh, Mediacorp has also bought a unit and uh, make it to his bachelor pad. And I thought you know just want to share you guys, uh, you know. But you see, being a um, M plus S uh, uh, a project. I guess I guess a, a lot of the, the the owner probably are I don't know from <laughs> from the government body side I don't know it's a good good thing or bad thing but all in all I'm trying to say this project it's really for um the who and who the 
um, the, 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 the region famous, the overseas players, because it's in the smack of Marina Bay Sands nearby. Certain of the units even can look out to the Marina Bay Sands, right? Of course, um, I read again this unit, um, this project on Marina Bay Sands. Um, this is a view from swimming pool out to the commercial site. It has great eight office. It has a plaza, which is a retail, and it has two towers of luxury uh, residences, right? And of course, I took a pictures of the cold storage at the bottom where the retail is, all right? And of course, these are how it looks on the um, uh, site map. Uh, and of course, later, if there's time, I'll bring you through a virtual tour, okay? And of course, uh, just a glance of the pricing. Uh, 120 odd units I have available. I really do still have uh, one bedroom, two, two plus study, three, three plus study, four, and penthouses, right? So our one bedroom um, uh, starts from about one point five-ish million, 2.4-ish million for our two bedrooms, 3.5-ish for our three bedrooms, and about maybe five and six million up for a four bedroom, okay? And of course, uh, now I run through some uh, floor plans with you. So, I, I mean, we have some I, uh, units that has already been uh, in Dira Design ID, and these units include the ID that will be given to you, which later I will show you some of the ID. So for example, uh, this is a unit that I have uh, shortlisted, uh, 24, stack 22, 667 square feet, one bedroom at 1.757 uh, million, right? And of course, uh, a little bit of the, uh, this is from the hall, from this line onwards, it's the bedroom, all right? Later or rather, I use a virtual tour uh, to guide you around. Uh, of course, uh, like I said, the inside view, if you hear me just now, from here, you look out, right? The inside view, it's beautiful. Really, you, you should go on site and take a look. It's very magnificent, it's very calming. It's really nice. It feels like you're in another country, you know. And of course, uh, the one, uh, the two plus study, which is also ID up. So it's all come with a private lift from the two bedroom. So for the one bedroom, of course, uh, it's just a regular lobby. But for the two bedroom onwards, it's a private lift lobby. You come, uh, this is the, the, the escape door. This is a private lobby. You come in, right? There is a hall, it's very huge, nicely done up balcony. There is two bedroom over here, all right? And of course, you know, the view, some of it even have the marina sense view, bay sense view, all right? So uh, the three bedroom, okay? I parked this unit um, 2407, uh, 1,539 square feet, also ID up, right? Also come with a private lift lobby very huge hall you will see later on right and of course the three bedrooms tucked nicely over here and a walk-in wardrobe for uh, the master room of course guys um this is marina uh one residences it's supposed to be a luxury uh property iconic uh i guess we're not supposed to build it too small and that's why you can see that our three bedrooms are at a very good size one bedroom 600 over square feet 700 over square feet uh Right, even the two bedrooms are about thousand one, thousand two. So I guess it's got to be some sort of a class, some sort of a luxury within uh, the development itself. Okay, of course the three bedrooms. If you look into it, like I said, just now the hall is really beautiful. Right, uh, of course the bedroom looks out to the sea, and of course in front uh, a very nice view. Of course a four bedroom. Mm, it's really really beautiful. Right, it's tucked at the corner. All right, and then we're looking here at twenty one floor. Uh, 2,045 square feet, really luxury, really very nicely wide span uh, 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 hall that you can see from here. Definitely private lift, definitely, right? And the bedrooms are nicely lined up over here. Or rather, I use a virtual tour to show you later. Okay, and of course, this I took a picture, a live, a real picture. You can see the very beautiful view of the Singapore Flyers, the whole uh, gardens by the bay over here. And of course, uh, the, the the iconic uh, Marina Bay Sands. I mean, you can always pick up a property in the District 9, 10, or 11, you know, but, you know, view are always a concern because buildings are close, pro closer by. Uh, there will be a mixture of new and old building. It's, 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 I'm not saying it's bad, but it's just a little bit different uh, uh, from, from over here at Marina Bay Sands. 
Okay, and of course we have the beautiful uh, penthouse uh, that seven thousand two hundred and forty four square feet. It's a four bedroom, right? Uh, Thirty thirty third floor. And uh, please allow me to show you our penthouse uh, beautiful video. Okay, thank you um, for the time to watch this video. Um, now I'm going to take you uh, through the uh, virtual tour if you allow me to switch over. Okay, I hope everyone can see. Yeah? Okay, so this is our um, one bedroom, all right, uh, on the 11, 24, which I showed you just now, all right? And um, okay, so over here, this is where the entrance is. Okay, entrance is, if you come in, you through kitchen. And over here, the hall area. Navigating over here, this is the bedroom. Okay, zoom up a little bit for you to take a look. So this is a bedroom. Into here is a walking wardrobe. Oops, sorry. Give me a second. Not easy to manage, navigate over here at this. All right. Ah, there you go. All right. So um, there's a walk-in wardrobe towards inside your bathroom. Uh, it's a one bedroom. Okay. So of course, this that door here, you can close this up. All right. Um, back here to the kitchen, and uh, I'll show you the view of it. So if you go to the balcony. Ah, here you are, the view, right? Internal view. This is the green heart, and these are all the louvers, the part of the design, and they see all the cross ventilation here. Okay, so this part of the uh, uh, the one bedroom on the 24th floor, let's look at uh, the two plus study over here. All right, so the two plus study, you yeah, can see from the door house, enter, all right, then um, my best backtrack a little bit here. See, so from the entrance, which is on my right side, this is the entrance. Okay, we go to the entrance. Uh, that's where the study is. Okay, I just go slower. Study. And the kitchen. All right, it's all ducted icon. All right, and you come in here, you can see um, the view. And we go out and just check out the, the view. Wow, see, it's beautiful, isn't it? All right, and we look back into the house. Uh, of course, this is the master room, all right? And we 
you try to go into the room. Okay. Bedroom two. Okay, we go to the master room first. Ah, sorry, huh? Okay, yeah, beautiful, right? So a very good sized room. Again, of course, we're walking wardrobe again and uh, coming through to your bathroom, right? And back out to the rest of the, the other bedroom over here. Over here. Okay, cool. So then now I'll show you the three bedrooms. All right, the hall, beautiful hall. Okay, and then the kitchen is bigger because the three bedroom. Uh, private leaf lobby over here is a private leaf lobby. It comes in through to the house, and then we go to the another one of the bedrooms. Over here, this is one of the bedroom. Yep, with the view. Look at the view. Wow. Okay, and um, then we go out again. Yep, and uh, we head to this room. Again, right? Beautiful view. We head out. All right. Into this room. Okay, so just now we are the master. All right, and now I show you the four bedroom, which is the 2000 um, square feet, 45, uh, 2045 square feet, uh, four bedroom. Okay, wow, see the size of the hall. Okay, and uh, the rooms are all here. Uh, this is the private lift lobby. Okay, and uh, you can navigate over here. Yep, you will see a wet, uh, a wet kitchen inside here. This one was a dry kitchen, a wet kitchen and a yard. Right, and then these are the junior room and the master room, right? Yep, so I'm block view outside. Yep. The, um, the bathroom quality. Because these are all actual unit uh, virtual tour that we went in to, uh, to take. Okay, and uh, just coming out here. Then we're getting outwards to the other wing. Turn myself around, going to this next part of it. Okay, yeah, so here we are. Uh, in the show flat, we built it into a study, but it's actually a, a, a bedroom, you see, with the floor set. All right. Okay, there, there you are. Um, our virtual tour, of course, feel free to uh, um, take a look at the virtual tour at our website. All right, and uh, let me allow me to jump back to the slides. Okay, and um, uh, um, yeah, that's it for uh, my part. And now, of course, I think uh, we look at some um, Q and A that you have uh, for today's session. Let me take a look. Okay. Uh, So, um, oh, there's, there's questions. Um, any risk to the valuation when um, the white sites get developed? Uh, any risk to the valuation? You see, um, these white sites are definitely from the government and I, I don't have the price, but they are definitely going to be not 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 cheap. Lah, right? So I guess when they develop either into a another mixed development or residential or a graded office or something, even, I don't know, maybe a casinos, I guess it, it will only help to bring up the prices back to where we are before as high as we can. 
And if you remember back at uh, Marina Bay Area, done deal was already about four thousand over dollars per square foot back then. Uh, you know, uh, before the co- uh, so cooling measures. Today it's back at two thousand mark, uh, two thousand five hundred mark maybe. I guess there's a lot of upside. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, uh, can I give you a disadvantage of the Marina One <laughs> residences uh, for more balance balance view? Um, you ask me, of course, everything there's always a, a, a good and bad, but for, for Marina One, uh, wow, I, I, I really cannot think of a bad thing that I want to tell you. Um, maybe I think, uh, uh, compared to um, tradition, 9, 10, 11s are always a little bit more traditional. Uh, maybe at the district one and two, it's always slightly more, uh, more new and uh, not so traditional. So I think uh, it, it, it probably need a, a little bit of turn to have um, to win the heart over from the very diehard uh, 1911 players back into the one and two, you, you know, if you know what I'm trying to say. So of course, uh, you ask me, maybe in terms of uh, fans, uh, uh, I guess 1911 may have a slightly more fans than uh, the, the district one and two. But of course, if you look at overall supply, uh, one and two are also uh, quite limited uh, sub- supply, you see, right? So mm, I hope that answers uh, your question. Uh, TOP in 2007, and of course, you now still have unsold unit. Is this good or bad? Um, okay, let me just explain to you. Uh, because um, upon TOP, uh, we have two towers 21 and 23 uh, technically we only launched tower 23 uh, on TOP uh, we only launched tower 23 on, on TOP uh, and that's why um, till now uh, balance of about 120 units I, I think uh, it's, it's it's considered moving a project moves quite fast lah, right maybe I didn't share about that part here All right so um, is it considered good or bad I think overall it's it's good because uh, units are always uh, moving uh, pretty pretty fast, okay. And uh, let me see, see through uh, the questions. Uh, hmm. Oh, land beats. Uh, oh, early on I show you a, a chart about land beads. Um, they are land beads from uh, recent years, uh, maybe uh, 20, uh, 2018, 19, 20, 21, you know, recent years. But if you do talk about Marina One residences, uh, I guess we are a little bit u- unique. Um, we are need uh, we are neither a, a GLS because we are not from a government land sales, nor we are from an M block. Uh, as I mentioned, it's M plus S, it's a government land swap. And uh, this is probably the reason why uh, as a developer, they are able to, they are more free and more easier to price it right. Uh, because they are not as stressful as uh, the rest of the developer. Because uh, like I said again, we, we, we are not from a GLS nor from an M block, uh, it's true a land uh, swap. So this is, I would say, it's it's really in a lifetime special project uh, for 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 many reasons. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, what's my view of a uh, lease decay? Uh, well, what's the future for a twenty-year-old, ninety-year lease old property? I guess. Um, you see, on one hand, uh, we all know, dear Singaporeans are always uh, different. Uh, we are very fortunate people. Uh, in Singapore, you drive a three-year-old car, people say it's an old car. You cross to our neighboring country, people driving 10 years old car say it's still a new car. So I guess we are a little bit more pampered, lah, to be honest, right? Because, you know, we, 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 we are living in Singapore. Ma. So yeah, people do, that is why the disparity of uh, real estate, you can see just now as we pretend, uh, could be the 30, 40% disparity between older project and newer project. Um, it is just the way a first world country people live. Lah. So of course, uh, you you ask me, a older project may, may, may offer you, oh yeah, bigger size, uh, lower price, but end of the day, what is your objective? Uh, is it really just get a big property 
you know, seriously, is it or is it capital appreciation? Uh, if you look at the rest of uh, many other sharings within the uh, the the SBS uh, twenty one, uh, you can see a lot of us talk about the disparity and uh, that um, most profit are made through new project on TOP. It's probably a trend. It's probably a habitual thing. It's just a way real estate is being set trend in Singapore, right? And of course, end of the day, uh, I can show you many many uh, example. Uh, uh, if you want, uh, which I, I didn't prepare here, but it's like if you can check back, uh, you can have two projects side by side. One uh, older project that is sell cheaper than the, uh, of course, cheaper than the new launch. Uh, five years down the road, the new project upon TOP will always exit with a better profit uh, than the older project. In fact, it always shows that the, that the older project didn't grow much. Why? One of the key reasons is because you must understand. The older project has people that went in on day one of the older project at even a lower, lower, lower per square foot. They don't have to make the kind of profit that you need when you go in now, you know, in order to make money, right? If you quote uh, Heritage View in your question, I will say Queens. Queens, you must remember that uh, when Commonwealth Tower is launched, even though Commonwealth Tower is 1,005, 1,006, Queens is 1,002, uh, people at 1,000, Five going to Commonwealth Tower five years down the road, four years down the road after SSD, still make profit of one two hundred thousand. Uh, Queens until today still at thousand one or thousand two. In fact, about the same price. So to me, this whole five six years is an opportunity lost in you because you are getting older, and you know, the uh, the bank do not think that you are wiser because the, your tenure or loan will drop. Ma. So that is all very important, and importantly. Going in at thousand two, uh, at the point where you were choosing between uh, uh, Commonwealth, you must understand uh, there is owner who bought in uh, uh, Queens at seven hundred dollars. Eh? He sell one hundred one thousand PSF also make money. Eh? That is why we don't have the common push. When you go into new launch, everyone enter at the same entry price. That's why there is a push. And of course, second rule is probably because people just like new things, lah. As such, so of course, uh, you you mentioned the question. So either that's why M blocks are, are 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 in Singapore law, in Hong Kong because the land is small. The only way to get land is either through GLS or through M block. So of course, uh, 2021, uh, which I didn't show in my slide, um, you can see that uh, M block are, are, are it may come back, but it's already doing. Uh, if you do not know, uh, from my records uh, this year. M block is already almost two hundred million dollars being done. Uh, in a smaller plot, nothing big, big plot like you know, like like in twenty one seven and one eight. Uh, you know, it's it's been already two hundred million in just twenty twenty one itself. Yeah, you can keep track of of all of all these things easily. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if we do have time, I I like to check about the more questions. Um. Yeah. Uh. So someone asked me about uh, my about uh, maximizing home my, right mindset. So like I say uh, again uh, today to me uh, whatever I've shared in the first uh, forty five minutes of my uh, sharing, right? These are uh, numbers. These are statistics. These are positioning. These are stories. These are news that you should know because it facts. Right, will, will, will facts eventually cause the result? I do not know. We can't make sure, but these are facts that that's why with this, you can have a right mindset. Right, end of the day, the truth is, uh, no, no, no one, uh, no one, uh, know the future. We can only tell, predict, estimate. All right, by end of the day, um, sometimes honestly the truth be told as even as a speaker myself doing the statistics and I've been in the 18 years sometimes to me la, uh, statistics is, is a very hard ball I only trust the Singapore real estate industry the, the skyline because the saying is today's high is always tomorrow's low not literally tomorrow right but it's like 10 years ago, you buy a most expensive property. 20 years ago, you buy a property that whole world laugh at you. Ah, so expensive, you know, it's so stupid. Today, you are laughing back at them. Because, you know, Singapore is a first world country. We will always keep pushing the the the, the, the whole the system of Singapore and we will never go back to before. So to me, uh, uh, if you want, I mean, if anyone asks an advice to me, 
I, I'm, I'm 41 this year. I came into the industry at 23. I have my uh, fair share of my property investment. I have also been in your shoe, uh, getting married, buying my first property, uh, thinking should I buy an HDB uh, BDO, you know, worrying things that I look back, I shouldn't have worried, but we are all human beings. Uh, that's why when it comes back to running my business or in fact running my agency and my people, uh, I always use a very uh, 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 down-to-earth attitude. Uh, of course, today I have also acquired a big uh, uh, property for myself. Uh, it's always based on uh, buying as early as you can, right? Buying as early as you can. Buying when it is the early as you can, because that's how you beat the system. And of course, uh, buying as big as you can because your profit is going to be multiplied by your size, right? Imagine 10 years ago, you buy a landed property. A buy a thousand five, B buy a 3,000. Obviously, B make more money because it's being bigger. And number three, right, is, is about buying as upper class as you can. Oh, we all, it's, it's not, don't get me wrong, because we all know in district, uh, you know, uh, 15 is always not as good as 9, 10, 11. Or in fact, uh, you know, this, this, this class of property that is being uh, 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 curated, lah. So my third take is always buy as upper class as you can. Of course, if you can buy district uh, one, buy district one, you can buy district nine, don't buy district 19 if you can. Size, of course, I leave it to you because buying a higher district is going to be smaller size. I know all these things because we are in the same shoe. So let me summarize, right? Buy as big as you can, buy you know as early as you can, buy as big as you can, and buy as upper class as you can. All right, it's been my pleasure to speak to you over at uh, this year 2021 SPS, and uh, I'll be back on uh, next Saturday. Uh, for an episode. I hope I've added value to you and um, thank you very much for listening in. Thank you. I'm um, Kevin Lim from ERA. Thank you. Over to you, um, organizer. All right. Thanks a lot, Kevin, for those insights. Interesting. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a different way of looking at the market. And I think, uh, as you can hear from Kevin, you know, time is, is again, one of the main factors in uh, our investment decisions. Okay. You've heard from many folks, there are still more to come, but I do promise, well, I had promised you rather, the lucky draw winners. So let's put up my magic spinning wheel, we'll pop it up on screen, I'll give it a spin and see who our two winners are for this session. And let's give it a spin. And let's take a look. And our first lucky winner for this session is... Amelia Tan. Amelia Tan, congratulations to you. You just won $100 in cash. And let's put the wheel up for another spin. And let's give it a spin. And stop now. Let's see who our next winner will be. Kitty Tan. Congratulations to Kitty Tan. So Amelia and Kitty, congratulations to you. The folks from SPS will be in touch with you to tell you how you can collect your prize. So you are watching the Singapore Property Show 2021. We are going to take off for a short break, but come join us. There's still more sessions coming up shortly.